This is a tutorial on how to properly annotate for the summer reading assignment for Freshman Honors English at Warren Township High School. Please follow along, watch this video as many times as you feel necessary, and hopefully, as a result, you will all end up getting an A on your first assignment as a freshman in high school. Before we begin annotating anything, let's take a minute to look at the annotation benchmarks so that you know exactly what it is that your teacher wants. First of all, we want your annotations to be frequently addressing character, setting, important plot points, figurative language, and thematic concerns. Make sure you're addressing all of these things, not just one or two of them, otherwise you won't get the A. Figurative language is similes, metaphors, personification, or any other form of a literary device. And thematic concerns are the main ideas that we've outlined in the summer reading assignment. Additionally, we want to see personal opinions and reactions in the margin of the text. So for instance, if the character does something that you really don't agree with in the margin, you write, write that's completely wrong. I can't believe he did that. Um, we also want you to go beyond the text. We want you to draw conclusions, make inferences, and make predictions about character motivation, symbolism, meaning of the figurative language, the author's theme. So don't just write the theme in the margin. Go beyond that. What is that example of the theme saying? You know, how does it go beyond that? So don't just write love. What about love is the author commenting on there? We do realize that annotations are not going to be perfect, but we want to see that you have shown an effort to interact with the text thoroughly and thoughtfully. Okay, that means the entire novel needs to be annotated, not just chunks here and there. Now it's time to start annotating. I'm going to use the first chapter of George Orwell's 1984 as an example for the annotation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just read through this passage with you. And as I'm reading it, I'm going to stop frequently to show you where I'm annotating and for what. So let's begin. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. Winston Smith, his chin nuzzled into his breast in an effort to escape the vile wind, slipped quickly through the glass doors of Victory Mansions, though not quickly enough to prevent a swirl of gritty dust from entering along with him. All right, let's look at this first paragraph. First thing I'm going to notice is the setting. It's a bright, cold day in April. So we've got these contrasting images going on here. It's bright, but it's also cold. Okay. And it's spring, it's April, and spring represents rebirth. And it's evident that this rebirth hasn't occurred yet because of the cold. So really you have things very much in that winter mode still. They haven't bloomed, so that's telling us something about the novel. Also, the clocks are striking 13. That's an interesting number because we think of the clock strikes 12 and our clocks don't have 13, 14, 15. So we know that we're in military time. Then we've got our first character, Winston Smith. And it talks about how his chin is nuzzled into his breast in order to escape the vile wind. So we've got this harsh, disgusting wind that he's trying to protect himself. So protect from nature. And then we have reference about how he's trying to get into the doors of Victory Mansions. That's an interesting name. Um, but he doesn't do so quickly enough in order to keep the gritty dust from entering along with him. Okay, so we've got that dust going on. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Going on, the hallway smelt of boiled cabbage and old rag mats. All right, that is disgusting, so I'm going to write, ugh. At one end of it, colored poster, too large for indoor display, had been tacked to the wall. It depicted simply an enormous face, more than a motor wide, or more than a meter wide, sorry about that, the face of a man of about 35 with a heavy black mustache and ruggedly handsome features. 
Winston made for the stairs. It was no excuse trying the lift. Even at the best of times, it was seldom working, and at present the electric current was cut off during daylight hours. It was part of the economy, drive-in preparation for hate week. The flat was seven flights up, and Winston, who was 39 and had a varicose ulcer above his right ankle, went slowly, resting several times on the way. On each landing, opposite the lift shaft, the poster with the enormous face gazed from the wall. It was one of those pictures which was so contrived that the eyes followed you about wherever you moved. Big Brother is watching you, the caption beneath it ran. All right, this is a really detailed paragraph. There's a lot going on here. So we've got this huge poster. It says it's more than a meter wide going on here. And it's telling us that it's too big for the space. So that tells us that the government, and we know this is coming from the government because of Big Brother, but the government wants this image to really overpower the room. Okay, so government overpowering. Then we learn that during daylight hours there is no electric current. Okay, so no electricity. Okay, they're reserving resources. At this point we don't know if that's necessary or not, but that's what's going on in the time period. Additionally, we learn that Winston is only 39 years old, but he has a varicose ulcer above his right ankle, and it's painful. Then, the poster, it keeps getting bigger, and the face is gazing at him, and it talks about how the picture is created in such a way that the eyes follow you when you move. So it gives that sense of being followed and being watched all the time. Watched all the time. And then you have this caption, Big Brother is watching you, which is almost threatening in a way. Like government is constantly watching you. You can't get away from the government. Okay. Um, additionally, let's move on. Inside the flat, a fruity voice was reading out a list of figures which had something to do with the production of pig iron. The voice came from an oblong metal plaque like a dulled mirror which formed part of the surface of the right-hand wall. Winston turned to switch and the voice sank somewhat, though the words were still distinguishable. The instrument the telescreen, it was called, could be dimmed, but there was no way of shutting it off completely. He moved over to the window, a smallish, frail figure, the meagerness of his body merely emphasized by the blue overalls which were the uniform of the party. His hair was very fair, his face naturally sang sanguine, his skin roughened by coarse soap and blunt razor blades, and the cold of the winter that had just ended. All right, let's go to the beginning of this, and I'm going to bracket this off because here we have this TV that is constantly giving information, and additionally, you can't turn it all the way off. So here we've got this government control of information. And also the inability to escape the government. Then we learn that Winston is small, he's frail, okay, so he's weak. And then we learn that it's the smallness and frailness is emphasized by the blue overalls that he's wearing. That's the uniform of the party. So we have this government provided clothing and a uniform for all citizens. His hair's fair, his face is just sanguine, his skin roughened by the coarse soap and the blunt razors and the cold of the winter. 
So the quality of products is poor. Okay, and I'm going to infer that probably these products are all given out by the government. Okay, so we've gone through three paragraphs now. I think you probably have a decent idea of what we're asking you to do. In addition, please make sure that you're either underlining, highlighting, or bracketing off the passages, the sections of the passages that you're annotating. I personally suggest drawing a line in the margin like this as you're reading for areas that you know you need to go back and comment on because that way you know exactly where you need to go back and you don't have to worry about rereading the entire passage to figure out, well, what was I supposed to annotate, what wasn't I? Some people find it beneficial to read the entire chapter and then go back and annotate. If you're going to do that, please make sure that you either highlight or bracket off the passages that you're going to go back to and annotate later. It's going to make the process much easier for you. Others of you are going to find that it's easier to go paragraph by paragraph like I did in this presentation. Some of you are going to annotate as you're reading the paragraph. It's all going to depend on your personal style. No matter what your personal style is, annotation will be slow to begin, but you will find it to be a wonderful resource and skill to have because it's going to help you better understand the text that you're reading. You're going to be thinking more in depth about the text that you're reading and also it's going to really help when it comes time to our class discussions and assignments that we're going to do with Fahrenheit 451. If you have any questions please feel free to send an email to your teacher and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Have a wonderful summer and we'll see you soon.